Whoa. Hi, I'm Terry Petro, and this is Fanny. She's a Deutsch Drothar, and we've been out banning woodcock. And we did find a brood back here about a quarter mile behind us, and we've got that on video. You've probably seen that. And what we want to do is we want to go over the equipment that we've got and what we use for banning woodcock. And the first thing we've got is a dog. Uh, Fanny's the Deutsch Drothar. Her job is first and foremost to go out in the woods and find a woodcock. And uh, she has to stay there on point until I get up there and assess the situation. If I see woodcock chicks down, then I say, okay, her job's done. And now I have to get her under control so that she won't help me pick up the chicks. We don't want her do, doing that. So then I have to tie her off. That's why we've got a lead on her. I have the beeper collar on here that that allows me to track her while she's running through the woods and it also allows me to find her when she's on point. Okay, Fanny is out of, out of the picture now so we'll go over the equipment that I've got. And this isn't just a walking stick, this is the handle to my net. And I carry the, the head of the net in the back of my vest so that I've got it with me all the time. And the reason I have that is occasionally a hen will sit with her brood tight enough when the dog's pointing that we can actually just drop that down on top of a hen. And then the hen will flop up, it'll actually tangle in this loose net and allow me to capture the hen. We'll take care of the hen and then we'll, then we'll start looking for the chicks. So I've got the net in my vest. The other stuff we have well, first of all, I've got bug stuff because we're out in the spring to early summer and there's a lot of bugs. In the back, I've got a pouch back here with a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. I carry a bottle of water for the dog. And I also have a half plastic bottle. So between the dog water and this plastic bottle, if we find a nest, and a hen sitting on a nest and we're trying to identify when the chicks are going to start hatching out before the banding season really gets going full tilt. I can put water in here and I can float the eggs and depending on how the eggs float, and I have a chart that I also keep with me, I can determine how long those eggs have been incubated. That tells me 21 days maximum incubation tells me how long before the chicks are going to be hatching. So that's an important thing to know if you're just getting started. Other equipment we have, once we've found the chicks, dogs pointed, we found the chicks, and we've identified where the chicks are, I have two mesh garment bags that I use to put the chicks in. And I'll put the chicks in one and zip it closed so the chicks don't get out. Once I've picked up all the chicks, now, now we can back off a little bit and we can we can get the banding stuff out. And the other bag, the second bag, is while we're banding the chicks, we take them out of one bag, band them, and then we put them in the second bag. So you're not getting them mixed up and you're not pulling a chick out three times trying to find the one left, left that hasn't been banded. Once we've got the chicks in, in the net, or in the mesh bag, and we're ready to band it, then I pull my bag out with my banding equipment in it. And anytime you're doing anything with the federal government, you've got a lot of paperwork to do. So these are my permits. My permit uh, that allows me to run the dog. This is a chart that shows me ages of eggs as they're being incubated, depending on how they float. And most importantly, this is my data sheet that I record the beak length whether it was a chick or a hen, what the band number was, what the date was, the location, so that I can report all of this stuff back to the federal government. So I've got that along with, obviously I got a pen in order to be able to record information. I've got my little pin, I've made a little safety pin that I have my bands on. 
and those are the ones that we're going to put onto the chicks. I have a millimeter ruler so that I can band or the chicks that we're banding, I measure the beak length and the chicks start out at 14 to 16 millimeter long when they're hatched out and they grow two millimeters a day. <coughs> so by determining the brood that we handled today was 25 millimeters, they grew 10 millimeters since they were hatched at two millimeters a day, that means they're five days old. And then I have my banding pliers. The banding pliers have an end on it that allow me to spread the band apart because the bands are all crimped together as they're on the ring. Once, they, once I spread them apart, then I put them in the lower part of the band, or the banding pliers, and, and slip them onto the bird's leg, and then I can crimp the, crimp the band down tight on the bird's leg, and they're designed so that they only crimp so tight, so they don't hurt the bird. And uh, we record the number, uh, number and the beak length on the information, and once we're done with all of that, we banded all the chicks, then we'll put all the equipment away, we still have the dogs under control off to the side, we'll take the chicks back to where we picked them up from, and put them in a little depression or something, let them settle down, and then just walk away, and the hen will be back, usually within just a few minutes. More times than not, the hen is right on the outskirts of where we're working, trying to draw us away from her chicks anyways. I've had hens knock my hat off being upset. And uh, I netted a hen last week that was so upset that she was bouncing around 10 feet from me while I was banding the chicks. So I just laid my net down on the ground. She walked right into it. I picked it up and I caught, caught her and banded her too. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. My name's Terry Petro, and this is Ty Sony, and uh, we're Woodcock Banding uh, with the state of Minnesota uh, through the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, banding permit. Uh, the way that all works is uh, there's a banding permit that's, that's sent out to Jim Burdine, which is a DNR wildlife biologist up in Bemidji, Minnesota, that has the federal permit to band all migratory uh, birds and he sublets permits to Earl Johnson which is the person that you would want to contact if you want to get into this program uh, and then Earl sub sublets us the individual permits to go out and ban woodcock. Uh, we get a letter from the DNR it allows us to ban woodcock it also allows us to run dogs during the nesting season uh, Ty Sony is an apprentice bander. He's going out with me. He was out with me some last year, and we just banded a brood together this year. Uh, he's learning how to do that so that when we give him bands and turn them loose, he has a good idea on what to do. Uh, one of the things that we're most concerned about, people go out, they don't do damage to the birds. 
Their dogs don't catch birds, they don't step on chicks, they don't hurt the chicks during the banding process, so they get a better idea to understand how to band woodcock in a safe manner and a productive manner. You know, what areas to look for, what, what, type, what typical areas woodcock would be raising their broods in, and uh, we're out on a wildlife management area up near Princeton right now and been fairly successful banding woodcock in that area this spring. We're going to go over the equipment that we have and the dogs that we have. Fanny, come here Fanny. Uh, Fanny is a, is a German wire hair or what we actually call a Deutsch Drothar. And uh, she, her job is to go out, look for the birds, and once she finds a brood, she points them. She allows me to come up and capture the, uh, to identify where the chicks are. And uh, in order for the dog to work well banding, the dog has to be under control. Uh, one thing we don't want her to do is help us to catch the chicks or the hen. You know, she's just, her job is to find the brood and point the brood. Uh, now, a good woodcock banding dog, dog is a fairly, fairly rare commodity because Finding a brood of chicks is different than going out hunting for woodcock and finding woodcock where they've been laying splash all around and, and giving off a lot of scent. There's not a lot of scent given off to a brood. It's going to take a little while for them to actually be able to consistently find broods of woodcock. As far as dogs go to use for banding, any pointing dogs will work. This is not a flushing dog game. I love flushing dogs, but but the dog needs to point the bird, point the broods, and, and hold and allow you to go in and at least get the dog under control. But it also has to be cautious enough so that it gets a little whiff of a scent and it goes on point, then let me sort out whether there's any birds there or not. And, and then, they let, then their job is done and it's up to me to find out whether there's any woodcock in there. Uh, the area we're in here is central Minnesota. We have a little bit of a disadvantage in this area. We've got good nesting woodcock, obviously. We also have rough grouse, we have pheasants, and we have turkey all in here. And they're all out in the woods at the same time, and they're all making sense. So they, they can be distracting to a dog. Sometimes it's a frustrating day that you see all sorts of bird and game and everything, but you don't get a woodcock brood. The dogs have to point. We have to find the dog on point. So we use a beeper collar on. Ty Sony, he's got a, a locator collar, a GPS locator collar here that he keeps on the dog. This, this indicates where the dogs are. Uh, once the dog finds the brood, it's all over with as far as the dogs go. Their job is done. Uh, I run Fanny with a, with a cord on all the time. Once she's found the brood, once I've identified we have chicks in front, then I have her lay down. I tie her up to a tree off to the side of where the action is. So now she's out of the picture until we recover all the birds and everything. Typical brood of woodcock is four chicks. So you're always looking and thinking we're looking for four chicks. I'm just supervising, remember? Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. No matter the size, age, or activity level of your best friend, you want a dog food that's natural, feeds great, and is full of all the goodness you demand. That's what we pack into every bag of Country Vet Naturals. Country Vet Naturals are just what the name says, natural goodness in every bag. We also make grain-free cat and dog food and treats. Learn more and find a dealer at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Okay, I got into Bandy Woodcock. I think, I think this is my 20... 22nd or 23rd year I've been banning woodcock. Um, way back when, um, 
I have an interest in wildlife biology, although I'm an engineer at heart or at, at uh, by profession, and this allows me to to get out and give back a little bit to the to the game that I that I love hunting. I love hunting woodcock, uh, and and this allows me to to give back to the the species that I love hunting. It also allows me to have my dogs out in the field and accomplishing something in the spring rather than doing everything in the fall. Uh, and I, I love being out, love working the dogs and, and working with the birds. And when I found out that we had a program that's starting up in Minnesota, I contacted a fellow by the name of Dan Desiker that's the lead wildlife biologist for the Rough Grouse Society. And he was putting the program together and included me on the list. So, Ty, um, you can tell me why you want to get into it. Sure. Well, I, uh, I moved to Minnesota about eight years ago, specifically to hunt grouse and woodcock. Um, so I'm an engineer as well, a little different different type than Terry. But I had seen an episode, I believe, with Earl uh, several years ago on television and read some articles. And a few years ago, I got into a really good area, maybe an hour or so north of here. And it was just loaded full of woodcock. I thought it was a, maybe a flight of birds. I'd gone back in the spring thinking there should have been a few more grouse in the area and just found a lot of birds on nest. Um, four or five different hens, four eggs per nest. I, I backed out of the area and felt all the birds that I had seen in a short period of time. It, you know, it would have been good to let somebody that's involved in the banding program know about the area and to see if they would be interested in going there because it was a very very good area in terms of habitat obviously it was being very well used so so i uh, contacted earl martin um, he uh, gave me a list of banders um, terry just happened to be one of the closer ones to the cities i contacted him i made it out with him once last year we uh, found one broody hen we didn't find any chicks well, we but we had a flying brood yeah yeah we, we did flying yes. brood. Flying it was, brood, it was yes. late in the season yes so it was, a, it was a really neat experience and uh, I dedicate a lot of my time, you know, with my dogs and, and hunting grouse and woodcock and just thought it would be a nice opportunity to be able to kind of, as Terry said, give back and be able to do a little bit and, and help the species that we like so much. And, you know, I have two English setters, a father and a son. Um, I love getting them out in the spring looking for birds as well. So I thought it would be just a, just a fun exercise to go through. So I, I started last year really kind of just getting exposure to it and understanding what all was involved. Um, this is my second year. This is the first time we've actually been in contact with chip, with chicks. So it's um, something that I was interested in from the little exposure I had last year. I wanted to move forward with it. I need to get approved to make sure I know how to properly handle the birds, band them, do the paperwork, and, and just take good care and, and make sure that you're doing it correctly. Obviously, my dogs need to be approved to make sure that they are, you know, capable of, of doing the things that they need to do to, to be successful at this. So it's just a, a really good way to, to get out, enjoy it, you know, give back a little bit and just spend a lot of really good quality time out, out in the woods with my dogs. We don't really have a formal apprentice program. It's, it's basically when Earl is comfortable and if I give Earl a, a call and tell him Ty Sony is ready, Earl will be comfortable and uh, he'll get the permits and send them the, the bands and all. Uh, so it, it's more exposure and whether Ty's actually been able to be involved with banding a brood or not and understand the program, we see the dogs, we're comfortable with the dogs, uh, then it's really up to the responsibility of Ty to keep everything uh, together and we can get them the bands and the, the permits. So there isn't a formal program. We had a, we had a couple workshops this year up in uh, northern Minnesota for people that wanted to do it that Earl and I were up at. And uh, we, we added a few more banders to the program. Ty was out of town, was out of the country during them, so he wasn't able to go to them, but we got out together here. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be adequate to be able to get the permits and all the ties, so. So no formal program, but we, the people involved with the program have to be comfortable that the banders are going to be able to go out and do no harm, I guess you could say again. 
pretty amazing experience. I mean, that was the first time I've been able to hold one of them in my hand, and and they're so cute, and, and it's a really, really neat thing to, to see them, and it, it's hard to find them, and when you see one, it's a, it's a really, really amazing experience, so I'm really, I'm really glad I'm, I'm getting involved, so it's been fun. Cool. As you might be able to tell, I spent a lot of time behind a shotgun. Whether it's at the clay target fields, sporting clays fields, doing exhibitions, or bird hunting, I always trust my shooting skills to the Rio Elite. Not only for the lighter recoil, but as you can tell, the harder hitting, consistent patterns. These clay targets don't stand a chance when you shoot Rio Elite. Dennis Foster here. I'd like to introduce you to the Drado catch and release boat latch system. It's back the trailer into the water, pop the cord and away we go. Once our day in the water is done, we simply roll the boat up onto the bunks until it achieves contact with the bow eye. It clicks securely into place, away we go. We are exclusive partners with B2Outdoors.com. That's where you're going to want to go and order your very own system. You can enter the promo code ITIMEPROMOTIONS and receive free shipping on your items. When the, when the season's getting towards the end. Uh, usually what you run into is the brutes that you're finding are all flying away. They're, they're two to three, maybe even over three week old chicks, and they can actually fly in about two weeks. Uh, they can do a little buzz like a bumblebee at, at not much more than 10, 11 days. And at, at two weeks, they can just fly away, fly 100 yards and go sit down somewhere, and then we don't chase those chicks. Uh, it's also getting more difficult when you get to the taller grass and, and the undercover when the trilliums are up and the marigolds and other things are, are growing, growing. You've got to find the chicks underneath all of that stuff. So it gets a little bit more difficult to even find them once the dog does smell a brood. Uh, but you, you can continue doing that as long as you're finding young enough chicks to bat. But essentially when the mosquitoes are out, the, and uh, the cover's getting too thick, temperatures are getting up to 80 degrees, and it's getting to be about time to maybe go crappie fishing instead of, instead of chasing woodcock chips. And she circled around on the other side and pointed here. My guess was that he was still moving when she relocated and he flew. See any chicks? <laughs> okay, when we have a bird like this got up, this one just basically got up and flew away. Just like a normal woodcock would flush you know, when you're hunting or something like that. That's pretty indicative of either a male or a hen without a brood. If they have, a, have chicks on the ground, they give a little broody flight or a flutter flight, and basically it's feet dangling, tail spread out and tail down, and just hovering in front of the dog. The purpose for that is to suck the dog away from the chick, to draw the predator away from, from her chicks. And, and if she needs to, she can take off full flight and, and fly away from the, bird, from the predator. But her purpose is to getting the predator away from her chick and drawing them as far away as possible, getting them out of danger. Uh, so they do that. They're almost like a bumblebee just hovering in front of the dog and just staying 10 feet in front of the dog, just drawing them away. I think that bird was just out running around in front of us. Yeah, we're going to head down here and, and uh, Okay, what I'm doing out. now, find getting the equipment and the paperwork out. And, uh, band some chicks. Here come. Getting all set up, ready to band. We found three chicks out of uh, a potential of four. No guarantees there's four, especially on a re-nest this year. But we've got three chicks and bags here. 
I've got a ruler in millimeters that we can measure the beak length and we can tell how old the chick is with that. I've got bands and I've got them on a pin here so they're all in numbered numerical order. And then I have my paperwork that I can record the band number, the date, and the length of the bill and whether it's a chick or a hen. I can get all that information down on here and then I go back to back to the to home and I'll be able to fill out all the forms properly and, and send them in so the Fish and Wildlife Service has records of what we banded. Now the the dog here, what uh, Fanny, she's a German Deutsch Drothar, uh, pointed the brood you know, right off here in the bushes and and Ty Sony and I found three chicks, three, and uh, there might be another one that moved off before we got in there or something. We don't, we never found it. We're not going to look too long. We'll get these birds banded and uh, and released so that they can get back with their mother. There is a hand. Yeah. If you like what you've seen here in the in the program, and you're interested in getting involved in banning woodcock, the person to contact would be. Earl Johnson, and the number will be on the screen. Uh, if you've got a pointing dog that's staunch, that's fairly well trained, and you're willing to go out and endure the wood ticks and the mosquitoes in the spring of the year, it's a catch and release hunting season. It's a blast, but it, it takes a lot of dedication, and it's not always productive. There's sometimes a lot of walking involved between broods. So, uh, again, if you're interested, Contact Earl Johnson and he can get you set up an apprentice program. Thank you. A diesel train rolls down the line. As I'm headed for the land of corn and rye There is a place I'm always satisfied Full of remedies to ease my worried mind Like pulling catfish on the banks of Cherry Cove Watching wood ducks glide like angels to the shore I'm gonna find me a dirt road